Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is not here today, but we got a guest in the building, a special guest. I don't want to mispronounce your name, brother. Sinqua. Sinqua Wall. There we go. Is here when Sinqua walked Walls. in the room. I'm Walls. like, Sinqua Walls. <laughs> How you pronounce the last name? They ain't put no S on it. They put Walls. See, they put, look, Sinqua Wall. So when Sinqua walked in, I'm just like, man, I know that brother. Yeah. I've prayed for him before. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm like, oh, Sean. Pray for my resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, man? I can't complain, bro. I'm blessed. I'm happy, man. I'm in a good space. I'm grateful. Absolutely. Yeah, You're, man. Alive. I'm alive. You're alive. You're alive. I made it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a little back. beef, though, Sinqua. I see you've been running around Brooklyn. Yo, I have. You know, well, I mean, <laughs> she showed me the way. So, like, now I'm, like, I'm taking my taking my wings and flying in Brooklyn. Like, I love it. <laughs> you live in Brooklyn? I'm there right now. Like, I was actually out here filming a movie called Nanny. It's okay. supposed to come out next year. And before, when I would come to New York, I would always be like, yo, Manhattan, 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 Manhattan. You know, I'd be like, Manhattan. And now I'm like, Brooklyn. And they were like, we're going to put you here. We're going to put you here. I was like, if it's not Brooklyn, I don't want to stay there. How I know it? that's right. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> How was it to die at the hands of your father, man? Was that traumatic? It was, man. I had to mm -hmm. go to a lot of therapy for that. Or, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, like, PTSD was real. And every time I see 50 now, I still get a little shell-shocked. Because I, I wondered from that role, what was your relationship like with your real father? Yeah. Because, you know, that could trigger things. And we're talking about power, by power, the way. Power, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. I think right. people know. Right. They That's know. The case. Hell Listen, yeah, you this is you people who have never seen power, which is so well, we ain't talking it's to wild them. when I see that, and, and and just because of how much it hit, like the cultural zeitgeist, when you run into people, which is fair, people may mm -hmm. not watch everything, mm -hmm. but when you run into people that haven't seen it, you don't want to make an assumption, like really, like, you've seen you power, just kind of yeah. go like, because I've never seen Game of Thrones, right? People that I've never seen Game of Thrones. I've only seen the first season, <laughs> but it's only because you played such a pivotal role because you played two scenes that were traumatic. Number right. one, right. This man's wife giving it up to the driver. Right. Okay. Is that traumatic? Or is yes, that... it is. Just the thought of that. Just that the thought of that. that. Like, that it's, 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 it was. Right. Okay. And then fifty. You know, your pops killing you. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Now nah, it, it's 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 interesting. Like, um, mm -hmm. it both were fun in 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 very different ways. You know, like what I love about fifty specifically was like when he steps into that world, he steps in to be an actor first. Mm -hmm. So I remember like, you know, coming in and being such a fan of him and kind of like looking up to him. And then we had so many like close moments of communication where he'd become a mentor mm -hmm. and like an older brother to me. And when we walked into those scenes, he'd be like, what do you think? What are we gonna do? And I was like, oh, bro's really, in like he's about to work now. So we stepped into that and we just tried to tell the story. And then obviously with, 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 the, uh, with the car scenes and whatnot, you know, I was just I was just pulling from experience. Yeah, I hated you. I didn't I, pulling from experience. <laughs> no, I hated hey, you. You always taking somebody's woman, man. I, I hated you and Tasha. In I, I actually couldn't wait for you to get killed. I just didn't want it to be fifty. You said that before. You said that but before. Why did you want him to get killed? Because all right, let's be fair in yes. this situation, right? They both wrong. Yeah, well, but also let's be clear with um, with Tasha. She was being cheated on right. and so? mistreated by. Two don't make it right. By I'm not saying it does, but somebody could understand why. Something like that could happen. Somebody who's close to you, who you talk to, who you trust, right. and then that bond grows. It wouldn't have happened. Yeah, but you... go sleep with a random, not not the person that's driving me around right, and that's right. with me all the time. I you think know that's what I mean? the thing. It showed his trust? it showed his age, right? And for Sean, it just showed how immature he was. Because mm. at the end of the day, like those circumstances happen. If you overlook some, if you don't water your grass, somebody else will. That's mm -hmm. just in life. And when hopefully. you see, hopefully, or the hopefully, grass dies. you know, or the grass dies, and then you gotta <laughs> buy new grass. You know, metaphors all around. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> but with him, you saw putting himself in that situation. He was young, and a lot of young cats, and like even me, like growing up, I saw friends who would put themselves in a situation where it was like youth would lead to those mistakes. Mm. That where as mature as a mature individual, you would go, let me just like Sinqua would be like, hey, bro, fall back, mm -hmm. don't do that. Like just let her go, right, and then. Young Kwa would probably be like, well, yeah. she's here. She's here. Car. So you've been it's that sound. guy before? I haven't. I really, truly haven't. I don't I believe you. I'm, hey, look, I, I'm telling <laughs> you the truth. Like, I, I duck and dodge that situation. Like, I've had, you know, I've had those propositions before yeah, yeah, yeah. where someone has said, like, you know, look, my relationship is broken. It is what it is. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, you know what? On the other side of your broken is somebody who's, who's going to be mad about your decisions. Mm. So I don't want to deal with the aftermath of him. Mm, well, let's bring it to real. the current because you're in Resort to Love that's on right. Netflix, that's right. right? Yes. And so now your character on that 
Yeah. Your brother is getting married. Yeah. But his ex, who he was engaged to, yeah. you actually try to hit on her. I, on I, that I, that yeah. feels like breaking not just bro code, but family code. Okay, so we've been having this conversation of what are the statute of limitations on a situation like that? Because you got to imagine, like, for my character, Caleb, he was gone in the military for the last five years. He and his brother have a broken relationship where they really didn't talk. It would be an exchange of email here, a text there, and then that was about it. Are you justifying this? No, okay, I'm just curious. I'm, right. I'm really just I'm really just curious. <laughs> on what's the statute of limitations of when it's maybe okay? Like, do you get the cosign first? Mm-hmm. Do you ask for permission? Or or if you don't know, then, then is that the time to go and say, like, listen, this is what happened. There's That's your brother, though. It's yeah. The, and he had just broken up not even a year ago, right? Like a yeah, year ago or yeah. something like that. You mean like to that. tell me you'd smash your brother's ex, but ain't no. never smash another guy's girl? No, personally, Sinquai wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Caleb! <laughs> Caleb, you know, trying to make justification for the character. Got you. But Sinquai would be like, listen, it, with all due respect, you dated my brother. It is what it is. I, I, I wish I wish you love and happiness, but it's not going to come on this end. So yeah. in real life, in, in trying to justify Caleb's actions yeah. in resort to love, <laughs> so do you think that is okay? Like he was, like you said, gone yeah. in the military. They yeah. had a broken relationship. He's marrying, your brother's marrying someone else. So yeah. he's in a whole new situation. Yeah. Is that okay? It's tricky. I think love is a crazy thing. I'm, mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, I always got to try to justify Caleb. So it's like, <laughs> Love is a crazy thing, and I wonder if you love someone, you can have that honest conversation with your brother who wants you to be happy as much as you want them to be happy. Then maybe you can try to find a way to salvage it. Do you believe in love at first sight? I believe in lust at first sight. No, oh, of course. That's I believe in lust at first sight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. So, if I so no love to love, sight. but yes to lust at I first sight. I think you can see, you can be infatuated. I think you can be very intrigued and interested, but it's always coming from the physical first, and then it builds to the mental and yeah. everything else. I think even when you say love at first sight, I, I love the way you look physically maybe right, at first sight, right. but not no mental and emotional right, connection. But sometimes right. you don't feel like somebody is so, like, you're so drawn to them that yeah. it's unusual and it's not just looks. A connection. Right. A wave. Yeah, the, you can't you can catch those waves. And then that, and then that became, creates a bigger intrigue. And then mm-hmm. you see what it, you know, it only takes, what is it, the, the book Blink, it, it only takes about 30 seconds for we you to We just had Malcolm on yesterday. Yo, and that's that's some book that I really read. This morning, like, actually. Yeah. The intuition that you already have, if you feel that, there's something to it that mm-hmm. could be a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what energy is, right? right? That's why I always tell people, get out of these. Right. Because when you disconnect from those and just connect to the universe, yeah. connect to nature, you'll get those signs. Yeah. You'll feel that energy. It's a trip because, like, we were talking in the car on the way here. I always had, you know, I had to tap in and meditate before we got here. That's right. Because, you know, when schedules are running crazy, you got to find that time. You got to mm-hmm. make that time to really just, like, ground yourself and reconnect. And I'm really big on that. And I try to stay, I try to modulate my electronic interaction because I think sometimes that's the most draining energy is when you're constantly getting those waves Absolutely. coming at you. That's why you got to get out of Brooklyn. You got to get out of Brooklyn what? and get some yeah, listen, Brooklyn, I get me some, some green. Yeah, hold on. Let's back nah. up. Yo. You say you like grounding. That means you got to take your shoes off and walk in some grass. <laughs> There's grass okay. in Brooklyn. Where are you? Where in Jersey? Where are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, I'm in Jersey. <laughs> I got a backyard. There's, but this grass in Brooklyn. So let's there's talk about Brooklyn. Brooklyn for I a like second. It. I'm with it now. Right, because you're from Cali. Yes. So how different is Brooklyn for you now that you've been staying in Brooklyn for yeah. a few months? Brooklyn has a wave. So for, so for me, I went to college in the Bay, and, and there's a large part of Brooklyn that really really feels like San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley, San Jose. Like it's yeah, very, Williamsburg. Williamsburg. <laughs> is, is where Williamsburg, that must be. <laughs> downtown Brooklyn. You know, hey, best I got it too. Mm-hmm. You know, best I got it too. And it, it, feels, it feels home. Like I feel like there's an interaction of just like authenticity. And that's what I always remember when I went to the Bay, mm-hmm. you know. So you you are you like it you you're happy with your decision. I just want to make sure. I'm happy with it. You know, my Postmates <laughs> account is happy with it. My Uber account is happy with it. Um, I rock with it, and I and, and and I didn't know if I would. Like mm-hmm. I really ended up in Brooklyn on a whim, and then it was like I can't go back. Wow. And you're also really good friends with Notori. That's right. And so you guys met for the first time on Power. Is we that- met for the first time on Power. We met for the first time on Power. We connected because we were sitting actually in our table read, our first table read. And we ended up just standing like next to each other, sitting next to each other before we had to go do some other stuff. And we just started talking about books. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, look, these are the books that I'm reading. And mm-hmm. like, I'm always, I always believe in trying to be a student in life. And we just jammed on books. And then I was like, Yo, these are the books you got to read. And then she gave some to me. And then the, the friendship just kind of grew from there. Is it awkward when you have a friendship and then you have to do love scenes? I think it makes it easier. Oh. Because because you can laugh at it and you can kind of he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's, it's not as awkward because it's your friend. So in the you know when you see sex scenes really happen, 
they're so technical. They're so like it's so much choreography. Like everyone's taped up and and you know all that kind of stuff. Taped up. Taped up. You gotta tape your parts up. Yeah. Really? So it's angles. It's not yeah. like you're actually tape? touching the person. You're not really touching. So you tape your penis. You gotta tape your. <laughs> yes. Wow. Does that hurt? When you take it off. <laughs> <laughs> when you take off the tape, you, you know. Don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it, Charlamagne. If you feel so, this is going to be awkward. Ahead, I already bro. know Go it's going to be awkward. I was just going to say, how much tape does it one need? You need a oh, whole spool, bro. It's another Serge moment. <laughs> you need a whole spool of tape, bro. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I'm just laughing. Like, what happens if you burst the tape like the Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> Why not just a cup or something? Because it's not as comfortable. Why well, not a oh, sock? You know how they have the sock? That they you do see? have a sock. So, you know, the socks, they've, they've progressed. Like, like <laughs> I, uh, in the project that I have upcoming, there may be some more some more sex scenes coming, and they've, they've really progressed in how they orchestrate the apparatus that holds everything in. Like, and the nanny? In the nanny. You have sex scenes in. So this is a yes. thriller yeah, that yeah, you've been yeah. filming, right? Yes, and you yes. play the doorman. Yes. If yes, that's correct. Yes. So the doorman's going to get it in with the nanny? I mean, he's going to get it in with somebody. Okay. Just trying to get some scoops here. He's going to get it in with somebody, <laughs> and, and you're going to see it. I'm starting to think you're getting typecasted, bro. I feel like, like, like that, why? I feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> why are you always the unsuspected <laughs> person <laughs> piping down somebody, man? The driver, the doorman? <laughs> because that's really who you got to watch. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pool okay, boy. Good yeah, tips yeah, for the guys. Yeah. That's really who you gotta yeah. watch. Like everybody watch the person that they see coming, but it's always the spook that sits beside the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch him. Keep your eyes on him. Now, another another great movie to... book, by the way. Another great like a graphic novel. Mm -hmm. Like I'll read that like literally like entertainment. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Now in one scene in Resort to Love, you are saving somebody's life. Two lives, yes. as a matter of fact. Yes. You know, in the ocean, and you're carrying both of them. I saw you post about it. So you're carrying Christina Milian. Yes. You're carrying this guy on your back. Yeah. You know, so how hard was that for you? You, been, I know you work out all the oh, time. But. That well, the, it's you. What, what do they always say? Like, you know, I remember this song that Sugar Free had a long time ago, where he said, "If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready." Mm -hmm. So knowing that that scene was coming, I have a great trainer in L.A., Grant Roberts, who we were like, he was like, "What is the scenes gonna require?" And I told him, and he was like, all right, these are the workouts we need to do. Like, he's like, okay, you're going to do a lot of deadlifts because you're going to have to lift. You're going to do this whole thing. So when we got to do the scene, that part of carrying those two people was actually easy. Mm -hmm. Because I'd already done all the work. To, and I had expected, like, oh, this is going to be a lift. Right. The only thing I didn't account for was you're doing it in water. Mm. <laughs> so trying to pull two people up out of the water, you have the force of water fighting against you. And so the first time when I actually went up, I fell back. And if we actually had that in a blooper reel, it would be hilarious. I literally <laughs> went up, and I'm holding Christina, and I slip back. She starts laughing. I start laughing. The dude behind me is like, man, I guess you can't do it. And I was like, all right, bro, now you challenge me. Damn. Did you feel like your pride was hurt because it was Christina Milian? You wanted to seem strong <laughs> in front of Christina? Right, right, right. <laughs> well, be because Christina's a real one. So it's, you, your pride is hurt only because that joke is not going to go away. Yeah, like, yeah, there'll yeah, just yeah, be yeah. like a random text one day where she'll just throw that out there. Like, remember when you couldn't pick everybody up? And, you just, wow. uh, and then you want to like be competitive about that. I saw in essence that your, your, your mom, uh, you credit your mom for making it her purpose to raise a confident chocolate man. Those are uh, her words. Yeah. Your words. Yeah. What, what things did she instill in you? You know, my mom always made me made me comfortable in my own skin. I mm -hmm. think, you know, unfortunately, at times when we grow up in the black community, you have people that deal with colorism. And there's an idea of like complexions that can be more favorable and complexions that cannot. But my mom was always em emphatic about the fact that you are enough. You are beautiful. You are handsome. You are strong. You are intelligent. Mm -hmm. All of these things. These are these are lessons that I didn't realize I was getting at the time mm. because I would hear it and then I never really ingested it. And then as I got older and was able to see the things that I was encountering in society, mm -hmm. I was so glad that I had that foundation instilled in me. Mm -hmm. And that was just her consistency. And I always try to say, like, I actually sent the article to my mom. I was like, this is for you. And she was like, oh, thanks. You know, the whole thing. But she did it sometimes with love and grace. And sometimes she did it very aggressively. Wow. <laughs> you know, like if she felt like my confidence was waning, that's when she turned up. Right. You know, but if I was already in a steady place, then she was very soft. What, what did it turning up look like? Like, you be happy to be dark skinned. These light skinned niggas ain't even well She'd done. She'd say stuff like that. And then she would yeah. literally be like, You see Michael Jordan? Did that's you right. see Wesley Smith? That's right. That's right. <laughs> that is you. You well done. You. That is you. <laughs> and, then, and then she would be like, Get out of my room. Like, she called me in there. Stop acting like out. a bitch. Like, yeah, she would say stuff like that. Damn. And then she'd be like, now Get out of here. Go be great. And you're just like, I don't know how to take this, but over time, I appreciate it. And like I always say, like you know, I was raised predominantly with my mom, and my grandmother, but my mother was mom and dad. 
mm-hmm. she did a phenomenal job, and I'm so grateful. And I'm so grateful that now as I continue to progress as an adult and as a man, I see more of the lessons and I can kind of laugh at them. Because right. I, I remember my mom used to always say, this one quote she would say uh, when she first would drop me off at school, uh, she said, um, you're always on display and you're always being watched. Mm. So don't fuck up, now get out the car. <laughs> <laughs> like this, that's just what she would say. Mm-hmm. And then she said, uh, what, what else did she say? She said, um, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then my grandmother always said, um, regardless, of, regardless of color, regardless of race, regardless of gender, she would always say, if they fuck with you, fuck with them. And if they don't fuck with you, fuck them. Word. Ooh, that's hard. That's a good one. That's hard. <laughs> she said, I don't care about anything else. But she was like, people are people, and it's about who who embraces you and who encounters you. And mm-hmm. then after that, if they don't do that, get rid of them. It's a I good know- bio for Twitter. Right, yeah. right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. I know we mentioned it earlier, but what is what is the relationship with your father like? It's building. You know, at the end of the day, like, my father is a very, very good human being. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, circumstances, essentially, when you grow up sometimes, you don't always have the same connection. And we've really committed now to both of us doing the work to build a stronger relationship. So we talk, like, it, it, interesting enough, like, Netflix is sending us all posters as, mm-hmm. like, a celebration and congratulations. And if he sees this interview before that poster arrives, he's someone that I sent a poster to as well. So he can also have it in his, like, mm-hmm. wall and everything like that. But he's a good brother, man. He's he's good person, hardworking, really instilled a lot of lessons. Like, I think my mom gave me a lot of confidence, and my father taught me how to be a fiscally responsible individual, mm-hmm. how to be more penny wise, like be very, uh, what is it, pound wise and not penny foolish? Is that how it goes? I don't know. So, but he just taught me like the value of a dollar. Mm-hmm. And I won't ever forget those lessons. I, I think as we get older and start doing the work on ourselves, going to therapy, things of that nature, we realize that our parents, especially men with their fathers, fathers were just doing the best they could absolutely. with what they had. Absolutely. With the information they had at absolutely. the time. Absolutely. And now when we talk, like I really, I like my dad is, such a jovial individual and has such a great charm. So when people often meet me, they'll be like, oh, you're very charming, you're very like, whatever. That's my dad's personality, right you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I really can see that in my father. When he, t- he can walk into a room, light up a room, and he can talk to anyone. Like he literally could walk in, not know anyone, and you come out thinking that they were best friends. That is definitely how you are. <laughs> no, yeah. seriously, because yeah. I I met you previously because your friends were notorious, yes. and then I met you at her house when yeah. we had her birthday yeah. party. Yeah. You know, for her, and you're like, come on, let's roll. And honestly, like you've done a lot of great things, like even yeah. showing up for you know movie screenings, yes. Yes. right, for people yes. that you know are in their first movie. Yeah. Things like that mean a lot to people, yes. and especially yes. in this business where yeah. they see you come in, yeah. and you've been Don Cornelius. You too, been, though. Like I really will say like what I really appreciate what you know you've worked with her for years is like your level of authenticity so it made it very organic and it made it a safe space for me to be like yo like I'll pull up too like let's right. roll and we beat y'all at Taboo we had the um, men versus women at Taboo and see they sometimes got Angela lies slaughtered mm-hmm. in Taboo but <laughs> she didn't even play though <laughs> like to be honest like she no, said that back great. we did amazing they did beat us like I, you know you guys had a better team you guys had some great all stars on your team and and brothers, you know, there was that whole idea, battle of the sexes. Men were talking all the trash. Yeah. The women were playing it in the cut. Like, okay, okay. I think you women know. are better at things like that, too. Cognitive like, reasoning. Yeah, we're a lot quicker. You guys were quick. You guys wiped the floor with us. <laughs> like, literally, I stepped away from the game because we got beat so bad. You know what's so crazy? That's true. I mean, it's funny that we always try to say women are the emotional ones. Yeah. When I think men's emotional IQ is way lower than Yeah, than for women. sure. And we... I think women are always very cognitive and cerebral, like you mm-hmm. said, and we sometimes are just impulsive and reactive. Mm-hmm. And that's why we find ourselves in situations where we get shocked, especially in dating. Like you can so move, we get shocked. Where we get shocked, oh. shocked. <laughs> no, we get shot. You know shot that too. too. Sometimes yeah, exactly. <laughs> one little bump. one little bump. Do say hey, my bad, hey, my, you didn't even. You know me. I'm always like. I remember being in the club at times, and you can anticipate blink response. You can anticipate when someone's really turned up. So you nudge somebody's shoe. I would always, my bad, brother, and wipe it off. Like, yeah. hey, bro, peace. That's right. Peace. We That's good. Right. I don't need the, those problems. But I think when women go into the idea of like when women find other options, mm-hmm. like <laughs> Tasha with Sean, right, or Erica with Caleb, mm-hmm. dudes get to a point where they're so impulsive where they was tell on themselves. Right. And by the time you tell your lady or whoever, like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm I've been talking to Shorty or whatever, or she just finds out because you didn't tell her. She's like, that's cool. Yeah. Now you know. She already knew. You had, you knew when you had somebody too. Right. Yeah, yeah. It sounds personal. No, I'm just I've over time, <laughs> you know, learned this, you know, from 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 observing friends. 
Now, in the movie, your your uh, character Caleb, yeah. he's not in a relationship, right? No. He's never been like about to get married. No. And then in real life, we see like your girls are getting married, like Brisha's getting married, yes. Natoria's getting yes, married. Yes, yes, so yes. Brisha, you... I can't believe Brisha getting married. Why? <laughs> no, I mean I can believe it, oh. but I can't believe it because <laughs> I know that's that's something that she wanted that's for so long. She really wanted. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. like she really that was, that's like stuff that was on her vision board. Yeah, it was it's on like, her vision board. When I saw it, I was like, I thought it was a sketch. I yeah. literally didn't congratulate her for like a week. I was like, wait a minute, this real? <laughs> I'm not even lying. She, uh, and the funny thing is, she's she's engaged to a good brother who I've actually known for a long time. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I remember B calling me and being like, so tell me who this dude is. And what's your? I said, listen, there's not a lot of cats in this industry that I would co-sign for their character. Mm -hmm. He's one of them. You know, so if any, if you're gonna choose somebody, he's mm -hmm. a good choice to consider. And then wow. to see how they've progressed, I'm like, hey, wow. Both two people went, and I remember him calling me mm -hmm. and asking me about Brisha, and being like, wow, well, I said, man, she's a good one, brother. She's a good one. She's definitely a good one. She's Absolutely. A good one. I said she's a good one. Very few, but she's a good one. Now, what are your thoughts about marriage? I think marriage is is right for whoever it works for. You know, I think at the end of the day, put the relationship first. I think so many times people rush to the marriage and they don't rush to the relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've seen because I've had I've had in my own dating history and I've also had friends where they set the timeline and the clock and then they move towards that and then you see them end up unhappy. So I'm more so like if we have a strong foundation and we build incrementally to the steps in a relationship that are healthy, organic and really just being honest and being friends first. Um, I think it's okay. I mean, not okay. They're not something I would desire, but I think you have to set the foundation of really knowing someone first and not putting the marriage before the relationship. How many times have you told a woman that? Cause that was very, that just came out of you so effortlessly just now. It's something I think, that, like, like, like Angela will tell you, like I'm a very like deep thinker sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like I'll sit in my own little bag in, 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 in a club or wherever and just kind of be in outer space. In just thinking of, In a strip club, literally. Yeah. Like, I, know, I know a lie, I'm gonna tell this stripper later. Well, I'm gonna tell this stripper, whatever game to me, baby, I don't judge you for what you do. Okay, you, hey, you don't have you, to do this. You are an entrepreneur, keep doing it. We need two incomes. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> but no, nah, it's really how I think about it because I started seeing friends get married and divorced. Mm -hmm. right. And then all of those relationships, I'm like, man, that's because you guys were literally putting the wedding over the marriage and you were putting the marriage over the relationship. Right. And then it was like, now you don't even know how to really communicate with the person that's supposed to be your life partner. And I really believe the best relationships I've had, we started as friends. Wow. So I put that first. That's interesting. I mean, I've never seen a health. Well, I mean, you see healthy marriages, but like literally my mom got a divorce. I yeah. got like one, two, like three, four, five aunts that all got divorced. Same, you know same. What I'm I didn't I didn't see it growing up. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, like both the the great women in my life got married later. Mm -hmm. They remarried later. And the and my grandfather, my 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 stepfather, they're good dudes, right? Be but what they did differently was take the time to get to know the people. Mm. And then and vice versa. So as I saw started to see healthy relationships, I was able to understand when things weren't working in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. And then kind of analyze, well, where do I fit in it? So I just believe in like, hey, really just communicate where you're at. And if you guys jam on that, mm -hmm. you keep rocking. And if you don't, that's okay. That mm -hmm. just means you guys are not connected in the same journey. You know, clearly you're a man who's uh, you know, done the work and to deal with his own traumas, right? Yes. So when you're unpacking those traumas for yourself personally, but then you gotta play a role like Don Cornelius. Yes. And yes. We, we know how that ended. Yeah. What, yeah. Is, what does that do to well, your psyche? It's it's interesting because two folks, I'm actually, so I'm, I'm getting ready to start production on another project that I'm filming with the great actor Brian Cox, who mm -hmm. just, you know, was on Succession, and he's a talented brother, and, and we're going back to trauma, right? Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's wow. a character struggling with PTSD and, and recently being, um, re re returning from being deployed in Afghanistan. And so when you've done the work, you have to kind of like go back to the beginning of what it felt like when you didn't do the work. Mm -hmm. And that's the the tricky part. And with Don, what I identified first was his madness was always tied to his ambition, right? He always just wanted to make sure that he made something for himself and that he also wanted to like change his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And the pressures of that, right, just trying to be successful can become so great. Mm. Specifically when you're trying to do it as an entrepreneur, as a black entrepreneur and also in the entertainment industry. So when I started to see all of that and then you went to like his his father history and being able to talk to Tony Cornelius, his son, I was like, okay, I started scoring his mental and figuring out these are the reasons that drive him to that. And mm -hmm. sometimes what people don't understand is no matter how successful everybody is, specifically in entertainment when they're like glorified or magnified, there's a lot of depression there. Mm -hmm. 
And there's a lot of times where like they're dealing with things internally that they don't feel like they can speak on. And no one's just asking, hey, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Like genuinely, are you okay? Mm -hmm. No one was asking that brother that. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of festers into madness and then it can take you down a spiral. And somebody like Don, they probably didn't even think he, they, he, he was, he, they never thought anything was ever wrong. They never thought it was him. wrong. he's him. He's Don Cornelius. Like, I mean, every, of course he's okay. Every, and the thing of the, 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 the mystique of Don Cornelius, I was so grateful to uncover, right? Because I caught him on the tail end and then like my soul train was like Shamar and like, like a little bit of like Maestro Clark and mm -hmm. like cast like that. That's what I saw because it was coming on like right after X-Men, mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, all right, well, whatever, I'm gonna watch this. Mm -hmm. And then it was like a, a Latin dance show that came on right after that. Mm -hmm. but I can't remember even the name of it, <laughs> but his mystique, you would never know that he was struggling with anything because he all. always carried himself with poise Yeah. in any situation. And there's like, there's moments even when he, you find out later when he was doing the show, he was struggling with a lot of that and he would still manage it until he got to his dressing room. I was able to get like tap into who he really was because I saw an episode, I had like a hundred episodes of the beginning of Soul Train. And I saw an episode where right before they cut away from him, Don lowered his glasses and he looked over at whatever was going on behind the stage. And I was like, oh, he about to mess somebody up. Okay, cool, that's who he is. And that was what, how I was able to tap in because I was like, there's Don Cornelius and then there's, there's uh, Don, DC. Mm -hmm. So it was like Clark Kent and Superman. Mm -hmm. So he put the cape on the host and then the, the man took it off. How do you get that trauma out of you though? Cause I mean, your, your trajectory is similar. If yeah. You got ambition, yes. you, yes. you in the business. How yeah. do you not get lost like that? You know, it's, it's a process. I think for me, it started with me identifying that I was weak in a lot of areas and not being afraid of that. I think like going back to like the idea of societal pressure and systemic, systemic oppression, for us as men, for us as black men, we don't always get the opportunity to say, I'm hurting, I'm sad, I'm whatever. And I ended up truly dating a girl who kind of like kept asking me these questions. So it, co it caused me to hold up a mirror because I wanted the relationship mm -hmm. to last. And then as I kept holding up the mirror, I started asking myself questions. Mm -hmm. And then I started just kind of going down the rabbit hole of saying, where does this live? Um, going to therapy. And, I, and I'm a big advocate for mental health Same. in the community and men and saying like, listen, it's not weak to say I don't have it all. And you can go and sit down. And I would literally, I'm in my first couple of sessions, I would sit there and the therapist would go, and you probably went through this too, and they go, why are you here? And I'm like, I don't know. And mm -hmm. I sat there for like, she's like, okay, we'll sit here. And she started asking questions and I started talking and then we go, yo. Mm -hmm. So now I consistently just tap in with self. That's why meditation is so important to me because I will just tap in and say, hmm, what is that? What does that feel? What does that feel? So I can kind of chart any work I need to do. Because therapy gives you the language to explain what it is you're actually dealing with. Absolutely. And then the meditation is part of the healing process. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. If you don't have a definition for it, you can't fix it. That's right. Yeah. And when you're getting ready for a role, I know like, I'm not sure which role this was for, but you were saying that you have to stay, like they told you it's better for you to just stay up, yeah. be tired. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know. What, oh man, that was a, uh... That was for the for I did this 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 pilot called uh, at that age. Okay. And 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 right now, which I'm really grateful for because it's a part of my passion. I'm getting an opportunity to dive into characters that are struggling with mental health aspects and trying to overcome those. And this particular character was struggling with several um, um, early onset bipolar disorder mm -hmm. that was undiagnosed and things. But because he would go through those those manic moments, those benders, he would stay up. So they would be like, stay out all night. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I've never had a director or a producer say, don't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Come into work tired. And I'm like. Did that help you? It helped me understand. Like, I remember seeing this interview. They said that uh, Charlie Sheen got the role on Breakfast Club because he had, he had came home. He had literally went to the audition from a bender. And the character that he had to play, when he walked in so disheveled, they were like, that's the guy. So in my head, I just justified and was like, all right, maybe this will really help. And it did. It really, it, you know, sadly, it, it really did because you are trying to stay coherent. You're trying to stay present. Your, your words are slower and you're analyzing things different to make sure that the world around you doesn't think you're crazy. Mm. Um, and so it all led into the character. Wow. I can't imagine having to do that because I can barely function now and I, all I <laughs> do is a morning show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, understand, I understand that a little bit, though. It's just yeah. like sometimes when you're tired, you're sharper for some you're reason. Sharper. I don't know why. You know, it's like when you when you, when you you are at that point where you've been having a good time and you've been drinking and then you're like a little bit tipsy, but you haven't really gone over. You don't want people to know you've been drinking. Yeah. So you're just very co you're just very present and coherent. You're just, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. And they're like, you look fine. I am fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was reading on uh, Pop Sugar, you're a big Marvel fan. I heard you mention yeah. X-Men earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, X-Men was my first introductory into, like, true comic books. Like, everybody has Superman and Batman, which I love, but X-Men was, was my jam, and it was because, I, I forget what season it was, I saw Bishop. Like yeah, the character of Bishop, yeah, and that was like yeah. the first black superhero that I saw. So I was like, <laughs> Bishop was cool. You yeah. know, he had a little scar. He had a couple tattoos. They've done him no justice They've in the movies. They've done him no justice Meth and Man wants to play him, actually. I mean, me and Meth can compete for it. Uh-oh. That's the role you would want to play? You I would, love to, I would <laughs> love to play Bishop. I mean, there's so many characters. I would love to be a part of the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and Meth is a good dude, so I'm like, that would be a fun little, fun little audition off. Mm. What are some movies that some of your friends might have gotten the role that you wanted? Oh man, ah, dang! <laughs> that's a that's a oh man. Now, I will say that 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 got that I wanted, but I would have loved just because of the whole the whole community of it. I would have loved to have even had some type of a role in Black Panther. I would have loved to just been a part of that that zeitgeist. Like I loved what they did with that. You don't audition for stuff like that. At the time, I didn't. So what about part two? Part two, they didn't. I don't think they had any roles that, that were new. They had like smaller uh, roles, so there wasn't anything that I would have probably fit at that moment. Got you, got you. Um, but at the time when they were doing one, this was Coogler coming off of Fruitvale, mm-hmm. uh, or excuse me, com- coming off of Creed, and I think Power had just got it started. So I don't think I had enough of the heat to really generate that role yet. Got you. You know, it's always a balance yeah. of like when the opportunity strikes, you got to be in a position to where it makes the most sense. Yeah. That's what people I think don't understand about this game is like, you can have the talent, but you have to consistently rise to be in that moment so that it makes sense. I mean, eventually, they, you know, they're going to have to recast Black Panther. God yeah. bless the dead Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, yeah, eventually, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I love what they're doing, though. And, and it sounds like in this one, like they're saying, like, they wanna, they're want to they going to immortalize that character. And then if anything, they would not they would not recast T'Challa, but they would create a different version of whatever that was. Well, they can now, especially with the multiverse, right? Yeah. So with the multiverse, you yeah. can pull a different yeah, yeah, T'Challa yeah. from somewhere else. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, know, yeah. you could definitely do that. You could do that. I didn't even think about that. Because mm-hmm. I just... I, I think Chad is, was and is a good brother. Um, he's someone who he like like I said he stood for something. Absolutely, he had so much. He has so much character. He was grounded and he was real and he meant what he said every time he said it. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and even in the consideration of humans, he meant that. And we have not uh, explored his last years the way I think we should. Absolutely, because when you think about what he was dealing with for what four years, yes, and well, think never about said his, anything. His, the precipice of his of his greatest success like he to discover that he was dealing with this even while he was doing black panther yeah and that's a diagnosis that you know was terminal right so you think about this man was running a race Mm. to create great content do good art and be consistent while knowing the end is coming and showed up for everything showed up for interviews correct i showed up for you know donated money donated donated money money. i mean cavalier and like you said exploring that but i think like really like honoring that in a true way because i always say like when you find out like, what do you do when someone says, like, you know, you got six months or you got a year? Most people are like, I'm going to go on some great trips. I'm going to try to just enjoy st- time with family and do all those things, which which we all would want to do. But he stayed the course to the point where, where people didn't even know he was struggling with it. Yeah. But if people were wondering, journey, why is this person on set? Why right, does he need? But right. you don't really know. And that just goes to your point earlier. Right. You never know what people are really dealing with. You never. And when you see Ma Rainey and what he had to do physically, mm-hmm. what, what he had to really do to tell that story, to have the energy to do that, that's otherworldly to and, me. And he was like that on and off air. I've seen, I've seen him in parties, mm-hmm. private parties. Mm-hmm. And we laugh, we joke, mm-hmm. and so, you know what I mean? And he mm-hmm. was just... I would have never known I what never, was going on. We, they had when 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 the uh, when the uh, when All Star Weekend was here years ago. They had a they had an All Star basketball scrimmage. Like we did like a little charity event down at uh, Madison Square Garden, and we played in like a little like shoot around. Chad was in that running around. Like wow. everything was cool. Wow. And you would never know. Mm-hmm. You would never know. So, you know, obviously, like shouts to him. Now, when it comes to acting, you also have other aspirations like mm-hmm. writing, writing, directing, producing. Directing, producing. Can you, so, can you talk about that a little bit for us? Um, you know, I think the 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 idea stolen from 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 Don Cornelius and also like some of the mentors and people that I've been able to speak to, like a Clint Eastwood, even like Fifty, is like you have to have ownership and stake in what you're creating in your career. It's always been a part of 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 what I feel like. If you're just talent, eventually you'll become obsolete. Mm-hmm. So you have to create more. And so now I'm in the lab creating a few things, have, have, have been fortunate enough to like pitch and sell a couple things that we're in development on. Um, That's great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That, that'll be coming out. 
hopefully in the next two years. So it's just, you know, mining the, sowing the seeds and mining the field to create a, a bigger, a bigger palette of what you can do creatively. Well, Resurgent mm-hmm. Love was number one, by the way. So congratulations hey. on that to the whole team that yeah. worked on that. Alicia Keys produced that as she well, did. too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Was she there, like, on set? or? She wasn't. She didn't actually end up being able to come to set mostly because, because I know she wanted to, but mostly because to travel from the States to Mauritius, like, you have to stop in Dubai. Mm-hmm. So you like when COVID was happening, because we shot the film during COVID, you have to go from the States to Mauritius, I mean, excuse me, the States to Dubai, then from Dubai to either South Africa or to Mauritius, and then you have to quarantine mandatory in Mauritius for two weeks. Wow. So by the time we all got there, for her quarantine, by the time she would have got there, it would have been four weeks and we would all we would have been shooting for six weeks. Mm. So she was on Zoom specifically with Christina all the time, going through like music and everything like that, and tapping in with everything we're doing virtually. So she was always present. But I think the travel would have, t- the travel, by the time she got there, she would have turned around and went home. You know, part of what was in that movie was what your wedding song would be. Do yeah. you guys think about that? Like, do you know what your wedding song? Oh, mine, one of them is going to be Meet Me at the Altar with Jagged <laughs> Edge. <laughs> Jagged yeah, Edge, yeah, boy. Come on. Listen, I ja- mean, that's a great, yeah. Jagged sense. Edge and then Drew Hill. The remix Beauty. or the original? The re- the both. I'm actually have both. <laughs> and I always Dr- knew what mine was going to be. Which one? What was it? We did uh, All I Need Remix. Method Man, Major oh, yeah, Black Remix, though. You, when you hear it, yeah. you, you, you feel it, you go, okay, I'm going to have reserved. Like, I already have, truly, I have my wedding planned out. What? Like I know where I, what I want to do for my wedding. Oh, you're gonna make a great husband. <laughs> Look, I just it was the just like I say that is because guys never. I know I didn't get involved in planning. I'm not gonna say guys though. That's a generalization, right, but right. I didn't get involved in planning at all. I don't want to because I know the large part of it is like <laughs> it is it is the woman's day. So you don't want to like overbear the planning. But I do have stuff where I'll be like, we can throw that in there, you know. And I do have an idea of like how I would be like, this is how we gonna come out. Like this is how what we gonna do. This is where <laughs> I want if I if 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 ever that 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 falls on me, I want the wedding to truly be a party. This you brother, this, this is a catch, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, he's a, I'll take he's it. A I'll brother take going, it. He's doing the work on himself. He goes to therapy. He's got a wedding planned out. He's got a budding career. This is a catch, ladies and John gentlemen. He's already thinking about his single friends. <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly, it's the truth. Yo, you know, I, I got a bunch of homegirls always asking me, and I'd be like, nope, I'm not I'm minding my business. But, you know, you might be somebody I recommend. Like, I appreciate it. But listen, you know? like you said, it starts with doing the work. Like I always say, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't start here. I landed here. Because I actually had to do take those steps. I had to just right. identify, like you said, my trauma. I had to identify the things that I think I was doing wrong to myself. I had to identify the things that I think because I was doing them wrong to myself, I was doing wrong to others. And then just start the journey of course correction and really just being honest. So it's 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 a it's a it's a path that I've been walking mm. to just kind of become a better human, a better man, and a better person overall. And it makes Same. me a better partner, a better friend. All aspect, better person at the Whole Foods, like everything. Same, same. Yeah. Bishop T.D. Jakes did a sermon this past Sunday called "The Courage to Change Course." Yes, yes. What, what? Because what, what did, what did? I saw this one interview that Will said, Will Smith said, where he was like, "You're not, is it's not your fault. You're, it's not your fault, but you are responsible." So once you are, once you know, once you know better, you got to do better. That's right, right. That's like right. you not, what happened to us as kids? What That's we right. missed, We can't be at fault for That's that. Right. But once we are aware, we do have the responsibility to create a better path. That's right. You know. Man, Mr. Walls, uh, pleasure to meet you, brother. Likewise, bro. Likewise, and uh, and I wish you much continued success, Thank man. You, Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations, Sinqua, for everything that you have going on. Truly, like, an amazing person. Thank you. Hey, so listen, glad to that means I get some juices in Brooklyn. Oh, I got you. I got to send you some juices. I got some more restaurants. I didn't know what you was talking to. about just now. I was like, huh? My press juices. I know. I was just like, <laughs> we because we've been talking about it, yeah, and yeah, now yeah, they're yeah. finally available. Listen, so I gotta I got to make you. sure. Listen. We go to Negril. We go to Tilly's. Yeah. I got to go. make sure you go to Kokomo. Listen, she put me on so many mm-hmm. great places where I was just like, yeah, whatever. Like, like I just get to, t- whatever, I'm rolling. Yeah, They'll be go. like, yeah, Sinqua was here. I'm like, oh, yeah, all right, good. I did pull up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know those are her friends. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, because I'd be like, yo, take their number and call yeah. if you need to yeah, go. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So you're good. And I actually, I went one time with my man, Seath Man, who actually uh, is a phenomenal director. Um, and I didn't realize, like, Seath was like the godfather in the grill. Like, he walked in and it was like, yo, Big Seath. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, bro, we're going to pull up. Like, I got our name on the list. He, like, he walked up. He was like, yo, oh, we good. I, was like, I didn't realize I was with royalty. Word. You know. Well, it's Sinqua Walls, ladies and gentlemen. It's The Breakfast Club. 